In July 2022, a story unfolded in England that was fueled by Shea Grove's love for crime stories. At 27 years old, Shea was a single mother with a troubled past who had a deep fascination with true crime and serial killers. If asked to grade her level of interest on a scale of 1 to 10, she would likely give it a perfect score. In 2019, Shay's social media photos portrayed her as a content and joyful mother. However, her obsession with true crime would eventually lead her down a different path. Since around 2020, it was evident to her friends that she had gone through a significant transformation. She developed a keen interest in real crime documentaries and literature about the underworld, and even owned mugs with the faces of serial killers imprinted on them. Additionally, her physical appearance underwent a significant alteration, with tattoos and piercings adorning her face, neck, and body. Che's peculiar hobbies manifested in her assortment of knives, biking axes, and a Celtic dagger. Additionally, she possessed a bookshelf in the shape of a coffin in one of her rooms and adorned her bedroom wall with framed pictures of notorious criminals, including Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, and Rose West. While Shay had a keen interest in true crime and a fascination with serial killers, it was not her sole obsession. She also had a deep curiosity for exploring non-traditional preferences, further elaborated in the comments section. However, much of her time and thoughts were consumed by her intense fascination with a man named Frankie Fitzgerald. Shay had developed an obsessive attachment to Frankie, a 25-year-old Portsmouth resident. Despite their sporadic dating history spanning six months, their relationship had encountered some issues. On a typical Sunday morning on July 17, 2022, Shay contacted her friend Vicky Btap through a video link and everything changed for Vicky. Despite it being a regular day for Vicky, Shay's call was far from ordinary. Shay made a disturbing admission that she had harmed her boyfriend and that he was now deceased. Aware of Shay's personality and her fascination with crime, Vicky initially dismissed the statement as a dark joke. However, Shay began laughing and directed her phone camera at Frankie, providing visual confirmation that her claim was indeed factual. Shay was questioned by her friend about her actions and motives. She explained that she and Frankie had a disagreement the previous night and went to bed angry. The next morning, while Frankie was asleep, Shay took his phone and began looking through it. She discovered a chat room on one of his messaging apps where he was conversing with a 13-year-old girl. Consumed by jealousy, Shay lost control of her emotions, grabbed one of the knives stored in their bedroom, and did what resulted in Frankie's death. Due to the channel's policy, certain details had to be concealed or omitted entirely. Frankie woke up after the initial blow and attempted to defend himself, but Shay overpowered him. Wrapping up her explanation, Shay asked Vicky, we're still friends, right? Upon receiving Vicky's report, the authorities promptly dispatched police officers to Shay's residence to investigate the accusation. Shay, however, appeared completely unfazed when she met with the officers, almost as if the situation was of no concern to her. Without hesitation, Shay admitted that there was indeed a body in her room and that the murder weapon could be found in the bathroom sink. Upon entering the bedroom, the officer detected a potent scent of bleach, which suggested that Shay was attempting to eliminate evidence. The attached commentary below this article contains the findings of the forensic experts who performed the autopsy. The injuries sustained by the victim indicated that their likelihood of survival was low or non-existent. Shay was taken into custody, and she promptly informed the officers that Frankie had been physically aggressive toward her and she had acted in self-defense. The gruesome nature of this crime left the community stunned and questioning what could have driven a young mother to carry out such a horrendous act. As the investigation unfolded, further information came to light about Shay's mental well-being and the circumstances that led to the massacre Reports suggest that Shay had been grappling with mental health issues in the months leading up to the crime, 
which were compounded by her addiction to illicit substances and alcohol. Those close to her had observed marked alterations in her conduct and hobbies, including her increasing fixation with true crime and preoccupation with Frankie. Despite being accused of taking a life, Shea Groves maintained that she had acted in self-defense when she shot Frankie. She claimed that she intended to contact the authorities herself following the incident, but that her friend Vicky had done so on her behalf while she gathered her composure. In addition, she disclosed to investigators that she possessed video evidence of Frankie's mistreatment towards her. In January 2023, the trial commenced and ran for five weeks. The prosecution contended that Shea had meticulously planned the crime over a period of weeks, if not months, and that her actions were not a legitimate act of self-defense, as she asserted. The prosecutor argued that Shea's preoccupation with true crime, her infatuation with knives, and her atypical proclivities all contributed to her urge to dismember Frankie. During the weeks prior to the crime, Shay's communication with friends and family through text messages, social media posts, and emails was presented as evidence by the prosecution. In these correspondences, she expressed her dissatisfaction with Frankie and her intention to terminate their relationship. Additionally, she shared her fantasies of eliminating him and even sought advice from her acquaintances on how to dispose of the evidence. She made an unsuccessful request to her ex-boyfriend to physically assault Frankie. During the trial, the prosecution provided evidence that she had consumed illegal substances and alcohol, contending that her capacity for sound judgment was compromised during the commission of the crime. Additionally, law enforcement officials testified that they detected a potent scent of bleach in the residence suggesting that Shay had made efforts to sanitize the area in an attempt to conceal evidence. During Shay's trial, her defense team contended that the act was an act of self-defense and cited previous instances of Frankie's violent behavior toward her. Additionally, the attorneys asserted that Shay suffered from various mental illnesses, including depression and anxiety which had put her in an emotionally unstable state at the time of the incident. In an attempt to prove Frankie's abuse towards Shay, the defense presented video footage from a camera located in the defendant's bedroom. It remains unclear whether Frankie was aware of the camera's presence. However, during the courtroom proceeding, the jury viewed the tape, which depicted him coercing Shay into engaging in sexual activity. It would seem to be direct evidence that Frankie was abusive to his partner, but it wasn't that simple. After the tape was shown to the jury, Shay added that she was in great pain at the time, but was afraid to go to the authorities for help and just let it go. But the prosecution said that the videotape shown by the attorneys was not complete and that the most interesting part was cut out of it. In the defendant's computer, they found the full video, which showed Shay and Frankie negotiating a stop word before the action. Let's call it that, choosing the phrase red light as the signal. Shay said she was in a lot of pain. All she had to do to get her partner to stop was to say the stop word. But for some reason she didn't, which led the prosecution to conclude that she liked what was going on and that it was consensual. Moreover, Shay's friends testified that she installed a hidden camera in her bedroom and recorded her contacts with various partners, some of whom she then blackmailed and demanded money from after she broke up with them. In this context, Shay was actively involved and the police investigated approximately 4,000 hours of video footage from her home. During her trial, Shay's friend Vicky, who had called the police, testified and provided details about the video call that took place on a July morning. Vicky's testimony contradicted Shay's self-defense claim and confirmed that Shay had admitted to attacking Frankie while he was sleeping. During Shay's testimony, she recounted her side of the story when called to the witness stand. According to her, she and Frankie had a disagreement the night prior to the incident. The next morning, she picked up his phone and discovered messages exchanged with a 13-year-old girl. Overcome with jealousy and anger, she verbally confronted Frankie, 
leading him to grab her by the neck and start choking her. In fear for her life, Shay fought back and grabbed the nearest object within reach, which happened to be a knife. Upon realizing the gravity of her actions, she started cleaning up, but was interrupted when she decided to call the police. However, before she could do so, they showed up at her house after her friend Vicky had called them. Shay explained to the authorities that she had initially told Vicky that Frankie was asleep when she attacked him because she didn't want to tarnish his reputation as a domestic tyrant after his death. Do you find her explanation convincing regarding her inability in this situation? Upon examining her cell phone, it was discovered that she had sent messages to another man, inviting him to spend time with her while Frankie's body remained in her bedroom. Throughout the trial, the defense claimed that Shay had attacked Frankie in response to discovering that he was texting a 13-year-old girl. Nevertheless, the judge dismissed this argument as an investigation into Frankie's phone data showed that he had immediately blocked the girl as soon as she disclosed her age. Thus, it is not possible to say unequivocally what motivated the crime. Both the victim and the offender were using illegal substances alcohol, often quarreled, and practiced different techniques. And this despite the fact that the defendant's daughter was in the house. Shay Groves was convicted of intentionally taking the life of her partner by a jury on February 17, 2023, following 18 hours of deliberation. The Winchester Crown Court sentenced her to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole after serving 23 years.